Most people think we're actually bonkers diving the Thames and it's a place you can't really dive, which is quite true. It's most really um, fierce tidal currents and the visibility is mostly pitch black. But the thing is, sometimes you get a really special moment. Every dive, you just do not know what you're going to come across. And to have this magnificent ship, you know, for me to dive on as an amateur archaeologist, what a dream come true. As you start at the top, it's quite green and um, it just gets darker and darker. The light disappears, there's loads of particles. It's like being um, in a blizzard in the dark, really. It's like the current's trying to pull you off of the line. And then you might find um, a nice ship comes along and stirs it all up again. As the nominated archaeologist, I've dived the site of the London with Steve many times uh, and it's quite an experience. The visibility can be very poor, down to literally centimetres of visibility. So generally speaking, you have to dive it by feel uh, around the site. And sometimes when a passing ship goes nearby, the movement of water that's created means that we're, we're sometimes hanging on uh, to the seabed uh, and we can really see uh, visibly uh, the sediment being moved around and artefacts eroding out because of that, that movement that's created by the, the passing vessels. They were quite close to us and we actually felt the wash from the propellers. It was like a sandstorm, the actual silt had start being um, dragged and it, we even felt that we had hold on to the wrecks because the actual turbulence did move us around. It's quite hair raising really when you're not used to it. These objects have lain in the mud totally undamaged, no problems at all until now. Progress, our progress, our technology is threatening our past. It is crucial that we save these objects now because if we don't they'll be gone forever. For me, the main reason to dive the wreck is um, because I know that we're losing so many artefacts on it. it. It's too important. It is a nationally important wreck and it's got to be saved, really. Artefacts from wreck sites are special because they um, present us with uh, very unusual preservation conditions. So we find a lot of materials that we don't often come across on terrestrial sites. Because they've been preserved in the mud of the Thames estuary for so long, they're in perfect condition. As an archaeologist, I rarely, if ever, get to sample some of those organic remains, wood, leather, the objects that people would have used on a daily basis. One of the most important things about the London is not necessarily the vessel itself, but the objects that we can recover from that. They reflect life in the 17th century England. They're the sort of objects that people like you and me would have been familiar with. So when the artefacts from a wreck site uh, first arrive with, with us here at Historic England in the conservation lab, they have to go through a process of desalination. So they come from a marine environment, they have uh, salts and chlorides in them, and we need to wash those out. That is quite a lengthy process. Once that is done, some artefacts such as uh, ceramics or inorganic artefacts such as this pewter spoon will very slowly just undergo air drying. Other artefacts such as rope, or wood has to go through further conservation steps and then we end up with absolutely marvellous artefacts such as this tiny little pulley block here again with some rope preserved on it and the preservation on this site is so fantastic that you can still see tool marks uh, on these artefacts which really allows you to get very close to the people that actually manufactured these artefacts. I think it's a real privilege to dive on this historic wreck. It's really frustrating because the silt levels are dropping. We come across things like this gun carriage, and when we first came across it, it's got all its pulley blocks, all its rope tackle in situ, absolutely immaculate. But over a period of time, once the silt uncovers these things, it's only a matter of, of weeks before the marine boring organisms um, start eating away and you actually see it fade and that is what it's like on London. Everything has actually got a really lovely luster, like the shoes have got all the leather grey, but then they slowly deteriorate. The beauty of it is that what we're really dealing with is not just a ship and a piece of archaeology, but we're talking about British history as well. I guess one of the most famous wrecks anybody's ever heard of is the Mary Rose. That has got an immediate history with Henry VIII. The London is with Charles II. 
and we are at a vivid time of British history. Everybody knows about the Great Fire of London, the Great Plague of London. The London was around at that time. She was the vessel that brought Charles II back from Europe. The sheer fact that it exists, and more importantly, that it's so well preserved, mean this that it's an absolutely vital piece of our maritime heritage. It's certainly a case that every artefact we find in East tells a story, and every time we dive it and we're losing this stuff, we're losing the story of the London. When the London blew up in 1665, she just happened to be at anchor off of South End. And now since she's been discovered, we need the people of South End to get behind a campaign to save the London for their town, so that a museum can be built in the future that displays the unique collection that's come off of this ship, and that people from all over the world will visit South End to see the story behind the ship and to see the artifacts. On the 3rd of July, the Nautical Archaeology Society and the London Shipwreck Trust are launching the Save the London campaign. Initially, the campaign is looking to raise £200,000, which in the short term will support the ongoing recovery of artefacts by the dive team, the conservation and the research costs, as well as helping us to fully develop the fundraising and the business plan that will allow us to build the museum for South End on Sea. Please join the campaign today. Follow the link in this video to learn more or to donate and help us save the London for yourself, for your children, for the people of South End on Sea and for Great Britain.